What's up guys, my name is Kelvin Wiley and welcome to my YouTube channel. If you are new, if you could please be as kind as to hit that subscribe button and also hit the bell icon to turn on post notifications, that way you're alerted every time that I post a new video. So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to rehydrate a dead insect that you might have come across or you might have bought, as well as how to pin an insect and we are also going to be framing the insect. So if you have a frame or like a shadow box to put the insect in, I'm going to be showing you guys how to do that as well. So without further ado, let's just get started. All right, so the insect that I'm going to be rehydrating and also pinning and framing in this video is this big beautiful insect right here. This is an adult female Heteropteryx dilatata, commonly referred to as the Malaysian jungle nymph. This is a large species of stick insect that is found in Malaysia. I obviously did not catch this. I ordered it online and that's actually something that you can do. You can actually order dead insects online and they'll get shipped to your house and you can actually pin them yourselves, which is what I'm going to be showing you guys uh, in this video on how to do that. But if you do come across a dead insect, most likely its body is going to be all dried out and very hard and stiff and because of that um, it, it can be extremely hard to pin them because they're you know so rigid and frail that their legs or you know pieces of their body could easily break off so what we're going to be doing first in this video is i'm going to be showing you guys how to make a rehydration chamber also known as a relaxing chamber this is what we're going to be using to loosen the joints um, of the insect's body so that it's easier to be pinned. So let me go and show you guys how to do that right now. All right, now the first thing when making your relaxing chamber is you're gonna need a plastic container. I'm only gonna use this large plastic Tupperware because the insect that I'm using is very large. So you don't need a container this big. You can obviously use something super small if your insect is very small. Now for the bottom of your relaxing chamber, we're going to use sponges. Um, because my Tupperware container is pretty large, I'm going to use about 30 sponges. If you have a small Tupperware container or whatever container of that matter, um, you can just use one sponge. One sponge would usually do, but you're just going to make sure that they're nice and moist. Uh, they don't have to be fully saturated with water, but just make sure that they are still wet. So I'm going to place them at the bottom of the Tupperware container. Now the next thing that you're going to need is really just kind of a preference, but you're just going to need something to lay um, on top of the sponges. I'm going to use these plastic lids and I'm going to place them right on top just like that. Your insect is actually going to be laying on top of these plastic containers. You just want to make sure the insect is not touching the sponges because they can be they can actually grow mold if they get a little bit too wet so the whole point is just to give them enough moisture not too much but just enough that their bodies will be nice and loose so I'm just gonna lay the lids on top of the sponges just like that all right and now the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna take our insect mine is wrapped and encased in plastic so I'm gonna first go ahead and cut this open It's like opening up some candy out of the wrapper. All right. Well, this is our specimen that I'm going to be pinning. 
an adult female Heteropteryx dilatata, the Malaysian jungle nerd. It's a very, very large insect, as you can see. Here's a closer look at it. It's about as big as my hand. It's insane. This right here is its ovipositor. This is actually how you can tell it's a female. I mean, there's other ways to tell, but I mean, the size, and the, the color, the males are actually a lot smaller and skinnier, and they are brown instead of green. And the males actually have large wings that extend to the end of the abdomen, and they're actually able to fly. The females have reduced wings, so they're not able to fly, and also they're a lot heavier, so even if they did have long wings, their body weight probably could not support them in flight. But um, the ovipositor is this appendage right here. This is actually where it lays its eggs at. Eggs come out of this part right here. And these guys are herbivores, so they are not predators at all. Or, yeah, they don't feed on anything but plants. The females of the species are also responsible for having the world record for largest insect eggs. So that's pretty cool. Large eggs from a large insect. All right, so once you got your insect, you're going to gently place your insect on top of the lids or whatever you're using to cover the sponges. So in my case, I'm using lids, so you're just gonna lay it right in the middle, just like that. All right, next you're gonna get some toilet paper and you're just gonna lay the toilet paper on top of your insect, just like that. apply a couple layers of paper or, uh, toilet paper you could also use paper towels as well it does not have to be toilet paper it could be paper towels and then the very next thing that you're gonna do is you're gonna take a spray bottle and you're just going to start spraying the toilet paper or paper towels just like that All right, so once you've gone ahead and sprayed the toilet paper or paper towels, you're gonna take your lid and place it right on top of your container. All right, and now the next thing that we're gonna do is we're actually gonna take our container and we're gonna place it inside of the refrigerator and keep it there for about 24 hours before taking it back out. One thing that I do have to mention is that the larger the insect, usually it's gonna take a, a little bit more time for it to be completely rehydrated. So the insect that I'm using might take more than 24 hours. It might actually take about 48 hours. So um, most likely the insect that you're using, it's only gonna take about 24 hours, if not less. Um, so we're just gonna place it in the refrigerator and after about 24 hours, 48 hours, depending on the size of your insect, we're gonna take our uh, container back out so I'm gonna have to record the rest of this video uh, tom either tomorrow or what's today Wednesday so probably Friday so I will see you guys in <laughs> a couple days all right so I got the insect out of the refrigerator it actually took longer than I thought it would it took three days, but I recently checked on it. So if you're wondering why this looks all messy, I just had to check just to make sure its body was loose. And it is, and I will show you that right now. So, a little piece of toilet paper right there. But um, as you can see, its body is loose. You can see the antennas, I can actually move them. They're, <laughs> they're not gonna break. Um, move the legs. So, you know, you can check to see if your insect is loose. Just take it out and gently, um, you know, you can get something like a pin or something or pencil, whatever, just to see if its body is loose to be pinned. All right, so now we can move on to the pinning stage. So for this, you're gonna need a board of styrofoam. The next thing you're gonna need is some pins so that you can actually pin your insect. These are entomology pins that I got from a website called BioQuib. 
I'll probably leave a link to their website in the description so for you guys to check them out. They sell a whole bunch of insect supplies such as these pins that I'm holding. But you can honestly just use any type of sewing pins or whatever to pin your insect. It doesn't necessarily need to be entomology pins. Now before I show you guys on how to pin your insect, I just wanted to show you that there's two different ways that you can go about pinning your insect. It really just depends on the size, uh, which will determine on how you're going to pin it. If it's a small insect, such as this female Carolina mantis that I pinned, um, you guys can first take a pin and put it through the thorax. As you can see, there's a pin straight through the thorax of this insect, as you can see just like that right in the middle so there's two ways that you can go about pinning your insect the first method is that you can actually put the first initial pin through the thorax of the insect as shown in this female Carolina mantis that I pinned you can see there's a pin through the thorax and that's what I'm holding it by I'm actually not going to put any pins through the Malaysian jungle nymph no pins are going to be inserted through its body um, I only put pins through the bodies of insects that are small, such as this mantis right here. Um, but larger insects, especially ones that I'm going to frame, I'm not going to put a pin through its body. And the method that I'm going to show you will not involve any pins uh, being inserted through its body. I'll probably make a video in the future on how to pin an insect, um, like butterflies and stuff, where you actually have to put the pin through the thorax in order to properly spread and pin them. But in this video, I'm just gonna show you guys the method that will involve no pins going through its body. All right, so without further ado, let me go about pinning this Malaysian jungle nymph. Just gonna kinda stretch out its legs, kinda get it into position. All right. I've actually never pinned this insect before, so this will be a first. All right, like I said, I'm not gonna put any pins through its body. So I will make a video on how to do that in the future. But as of right now, what you're gonna do is you're just gonna take your pin and you're just going to, let's say the foreleg, right? I'm gonna take it and brush against its body and I'm gonna put the pin right there. So as you can see, its leg is against the pin and what's going to happen is within a couple days or probably tomorrow it should be all dried out the body is going to dry and harden and then when you remove all the pins the body will be in that exact position so the leg will be just like that if i leave it like that i'm actually gonna switch it and change it up a little bit but you'll see as i go All right, so I finally finished pinning the Malaysian jungle nymph. So the only thing left to do now is let it sit for about 24 hours just to give the body enough time to harden and dry out. And then after that, then I'm gonna show you how to frame it. All right, now that the Malaysian jungle nymph is finally dried, we can now move on to the last step, which is framing our insect. So for this step, you are going to need a frame. And sorry if the frame is not within the frame of the video. It is a big frame and what I'm recording on, it's kind of hard to get everything in the shot. So I apologize for that. Um, but this is just a normal, simple shadow box that I'm gonna put the insect in. Now, depending on how big your insect is, will determine on what you're gonna use to uh, keep your insect in the frame 
So for this, because my insect is you know, quite big, I'm gonna be using a hot glue stick. But if you have a smaller insect, then you can actually use super glue. So it just depends on the size of your insect. So now I'm just gonna carefully remove the pins from the insect. All right, and now I can finally frame this insect. So as you can see, its body is completely dried. I wouldn't advise you to necessarily touch or pick up your insect, but because this insect is pretty big and sturdy, um, the chances of a piece falling off is very unlikely. But I would refrain from picking up your insect. If you have a smaller insect that you can't pick up, um, you can actually use some tweezers to uh, hold the body up to place in the frame when you go to glue it. You could just hold it with the, uh, the tweezers and place it right in the center of the frame. All right, so I'm just going to take my hot glue and I'm going to apply some right down the body of the insect. Just like that. All right. Just place it right in the middle. Make sure it's nice and symmetrical. Apply a little bit of pressure. go so now all I have to do is just get the front of the frame and place it on top and that will actually be it Well, that is going to be it, my friends. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, could you please leave a like and a comment? And if you're new, could you please hit that subscribe button and also hit the bell icon to turn on post notifications. That way you're alerted every time I post a new video. Thank you guys so much, and I will see you guys in the next video.